Hello. So last week on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and some WhatsApp groups I posted the following. Long weekend coming up so I thought I'd make another silly YouTube video but I need your help. Tell me your first name and a fact about yourself and I'll try and turn as many of you as I can into limericks because why not with this emoji. And quite a few people responded which is great. I do know some of these people but I do not know some of these people so apologies if I offend either group I guess. Let's get into it. This one came in via Instagram and this is for Rama, R-A-H-M-A, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, who loves eating chocolate is her fact and I don't think I know Rama so this is a complete stranger. Rama ate chocolate with ease. She'd cover her hands in it whenever she'd please but in one painful bite she mistook with a fright her own fingers for those by Cadbury's. The next one is from Facebook and it comes in from Lucy and her fact is that she hates clowns. Lucy hates clowns. I suppose it's their makeup and squeaky red noses. She hates what they do. Oh, she hates them right through from their heads to their really long toeses because of the shoe, because their shoes, they wear the shoes, you know, the the long, also toeses is perfectly fine as a word, just in case you're wondering. The next one via Facebook from Anne-Sophie. Anne-Sophie is someone who I once stayed with in an Airbnb in Canada and then she moved to London. Fun fact. And now we're Facebook friends because that's how the world works. So Anne-Sophie says she's passionate about human rights. So let's see where this goes. In life, you must pick your main fights. Anne-Sophie, well, she chose human rights. So if you oppress or your healthcare's a mess, then watch out. She's got you in her sights. So like a societal message there that we can all get behind. So the next one came in via WhatsApp from the F45 Made of Ale WhatsApp group, F45 Crew, which is actually quite a few people on this list because quite a few of them got back to me wanting limericks. So Annie, her fact is that she has a cat and she does fitness. So I know Annie, so that's, you'll see why that features. Okay, Annie, she likes to keep fit, but in lockdown, she's missing her kit. So to increase the size of her cat who's named Kaiser, she overfeeds, then reps with it. Her cat is actually called Kaiser. What I'm getting at is that she's, she's made him fat so that she can use it as a weight. The cat, that is. That's what I, in case that wasn't clear. Let's move on. This one came in via WhatsApp from Beth, who is also part of the F45 Made of Vale crew. And Beth's fact is that she loves sloths which is irritating to say, but here we go. When it comes to sloths, Beth is obsessed. She mimics the way that they rest. You can tell her addiction is pure fact and not fiction by the lazy ass way that she's dressed. Beth, I love you. I think you dress very well. I just was trying to get in some sloth stuff and all I really know about sloths is they're sort of, they, they rest a lot, they're quite slow moving, lazy. So that's what I did there, but I think you dress great. It's purely for comic effect. This one also through WhatsApp from the F45 Maybell crew, which I'm gonna have to now do every time. This is from Kathy Kelly, and her fact is that she's enjoying lockdown, which she said, which she sent me in a sort of guilty pleasure kind of way. There was some follow-up stuff. Anyway, this is what we've done. Lockdown suits our dear friend Kathy Kelly. She gets paid to basically watch telly. She can sit on her ass or she can do a hit class and can choose to be clean or be smelly. So you'll notice there that I full named Kathy Kelly partly because she gave me her full name and also because Kelly is useful for rhyming with things. This one also via WhatsApp for Steph, also part of the F45 Medivale crew. And uh, Steph is actually one of the trainers at uh, F45 Medivale. And Steph actually gave me two facts because she's called Steph and she says, I'm deaf in my right ear. And she thought that would be too easy to rhyme Steph with deaf, I assume. So then she gave me that she's obsessed with Pad Thai. And I thought, let's see if we can use both. Steph's hearing was never too fly but her family had no idea why. Till the doctors did peer deep inside her right ear and discovered it full of pad thai. As you can tell, very proud of myself for that one as well. Steph, I'm not a medical professional, but if you haven't actually had anyone have a look in there, make sure you've just not dropped a couple of noodles, noodles up in there. This one via WhatsApp again for Jenny, also part of the F45 Medical Crew. And Jenny makes cakes, that's her fact. This is what I did for Jenny. Jenny makes great chocolate cakes. And she's not known for making mistakes. But one day things went wrong when her cake baked too long and it all looked like dry poopy flakes. Because chocolate is, is brown and then, and so is poop usually, unless something really bad has happened. And then, so, cause, and it dried out, so. I just really wanted to use poopy in one of the limericks. The next one, WhatsApp for Saffron, who is also part of F45 Medivale Crew! That one went on longer. And Saffron is obsessed with the Big Bang Theory, she says, obsessed. 
which is concerning, but here we go. After fixing her TV antennae, Saffron looked for a new show, but so many! Then her saviour, at last, the Big Bang Theory cast. Bless Leonard Raj, Howard Sheldon, and Penny. Again, pretty proud of myself there for getting in the names of most of the characters, the, like the main ones. There's other ones, obviously, but those are the main ones from the Big Bang Theory. So, you're welcome. This next one, for Ruthie, via Facebook. Uh, Ruthie is a friend of mine who is the cousin of another friend of mine. These are fun facts. And Ruthie's fact that she gave me is that she makes jewellery. Now Ruthie don't like no surprises, so protects where her neck and her eyes is. She makes sharp little jewels to deter all you tools available in all shapes and sizes. So, sort of like a sales pitch for Ruthie at the end there. She does make jewellery professionally, so if you are looking for some to be made, then, I don't know, contact me, I'll see? I don't know how that works. The next one from Facebook for Tasha, who interestingly spells her name T-A-S-H-J-A, -S -S like Tasha. I think we met in Cardiff many, many years ago. Her fact is that she's South African, so this is what we did for Tasha. Tasha, she was feeling quite blue. In the lockdown, she'd not much to do, except sing and to dance and practice Afrikaans and repeat to herself, as it brew? So what I've done there is I've taken my little South African phrase there and I've, I've just popped it in the end and that was really the inspiration for the entire limerick. I don't know enough about South Africa to do much more than that. Next! This one came in from Facebook. This is for Susan. Her fact is that she loves to dance. Oh, she loves a good dance-off, does Susan. And is not such a big fan of losing. She once danced so wild that she face-kicked a child, and now she's been banned from the boozing. And a thing I know about Susan is that she's Irish, so I did a little... That was an Irish accent, in case you weren't clear. At the end there, a little bit of... Just a nod. Just a little nod to you, Susan. But to please stop kicking children, because it's not... It's not cool. Next one for Tracy via Facebook. And Tracy says she's never been in a song before. That makes me think she doesn't quite know what a limerick is, the fact that she gave me that as her fact. But anyway, it's still a fact that she's never been in a song before, even after this, because this is not a song. Here's what I did. Tracy normally knows all her shiz, and I've seen her demolish a quiz. She's usually clever, but in this instance, however, doesn't get what a limerick is. So I use that as the whole that was the whole thing. This one came in from Instagram for Megan. Uh, I don't know Megan, but what I do know about Megan is that she sells toilet stalls. Apparently that is her job, that she sells toilet stalls. Very specifically the stalls, that's what she does. Megan is queen of the cell. She can sell toilet stalls no matter the smell. She's sold, don't you know, ice to an Eskimo and sold 10 million matches in hell. So all I really know about Megan is she sells stuff, so I've just ran with it. This one also came in from Instagram, and this is for Kirk, who is a project manager from Ottawa, Canada. So I think that's two facts in there, but we, we ran with it anyway. I don't know Kirk, but this is what I'm guessing his life is like. Kirk, he had never sunk lower than stealing his poor neighbor's mower, except he did cross the line when he overpriced his time on that project he managed in Ottawa. I've taken the word Ottawa, I know how it's pronounced, I've mispronounced it for comic effect and poetic license, and as we can all agree, it was genius. So, this one via Facebook. This is for Kunal, and his fact is he's a Brit living in California, and Kunal and I went to school together. Oh, Facebook school, Facebook people, friends. So this is what I did for Kunal. British Kunal moved to the US, and their grammar caused him much distress. He'd say, excuse me, English speakers. You say trainers, not sneakers, and he'd scream out, it couldn't care less. So really that was just an excuse for me to vent my anger at Americans when they say, I could care less about what you think, whatever. It's couldn't care less. You, you, couldn't li you literally couldn't care any less than you do about that thing. Could care less is wrong and makes you look like an absolute moron. Drives me nuts. In TV shows and in music, I could care less what you think. Oh, well, that's great. Doesn't make any sense. So, moving on. This one via Facebook for Georgina. And Georgina, her fact is she loves shimmery water. And I, I would love to know more about how that plays out in day-to-day in -day life, but here's what I've assumed happens. There once was a lady, Georgina, who had a distracted demeanor. Each time that she caught a sunbeam on some water, she required 
a strong intervener. What I mean is that she would just be distracted so much that she had someone had to take her away from the shimmery water. Again, if you have to explain it, maybe not the best, but certainly the best that I can do. And you'll be pleased or sad to know that this is the last one. This came in via Facebook. This is for Karen. And her fact is that she is clumsy and breaks things. So this is what I did for Karen. Now, Karen is really quite smoking, but she breaks lots of things. I'm not joking. If you're trying to date her, she'll say, nah, see you later. And like that, all Israelis' hearts broken. Karen lives in Israel, so I didn't just choose a random country. So that's that makes sense, which is another point for me. And I was very proud of myself that she said she's clumsy and breaks things. And I took that and I went for she breaks hearts, which are things, but in a metaphorical, you get it, you get it. I know, more points, right? And that was me turning you and your names and facts and your lives into limericks. If there's any animators watching this who want to take any of those and turn them into little animations to, to really bring them to life, I think that would be a lot of fun. Otherwise, thanks for watching. And if I ever do one of these again and you want to have yourself featured, then make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel and you follow me on the things, the links to all of which are in the description below. Anyone in the UK, have a lovely long back holiday but be safe and everyone else just be safe and well and I'll see you again soon. Bye!